which is a book about, well, lifestyle and nutrition and exercise. But how on earth did it come about? Yeah, well, basically, the whole thing came about because as of last year, I uh, started making YouTube videos of workout routines and fitness tips and all that kind of stuff. And then we thought the idea of a book could be quite interesting to get it put together. And it's got 80 of like my favorite recipes in there, breakfast, lunch, dinners, sweet treats, um, and things that you can actually have a healthy lifestyle. It also touches on mental health and all that kind of stuff. It's even got my mum's sausage casserole in there. Oh, you've given that away, have you? I know, it's just terrible. I always try to make it, but never quite make it as good as her. Hey, listen, no, the last thing you made me was the banana cake, wasn't it? Yes, exactly. I'm, I'm, there's, banana, um, there's banana muffins in there, actually, so mm. you'll be able to make it yourself. Well, look, Tom, you know me. Look at this Greek godlike body of mine. <laughs> Thank you. It's not that funny. Well, well you know, you know it's, it's, it's beautiful in its own way. <laughs> <laughs> it does need some work, I must admit. What could you, what could you advise um, a gentleman of now 55? Uh, what, what could you do for me? Well, to be honest, it's all about, uh, like, I touch on it in the book as well. There's little things and little things that you can change and to change your lifestyle. Not so much like a, a fad diet, but it's something that you can change your lifestyle and enjoy eating your food, set yourself some goals and think about long term, short term, medium term, all those different types of things. And also mindfulness and thinking about what you're eating and how you're eating it and all that kind of stuff can really help with uh, keeping you in good shape. OK, obviously this has taken years for you to get in that physical peak. Have you ever suffered? Have you ever found yourself either dehydrated or malnourished? Or have you ever got it wrong? I mean, yeah, of course. There's been times where I, I had to learn myself throughout diving career of when I was eating too much or when I was eating too little and then trying to find out what actually worked for me. And then that's how all of this came about. All the things that I've learned over the years through diving and what I should be eating in the nutrients and minerals and vitamins and everything you need from food and not just for an athlete as well but for brain power going into work going into school and exam whatever it may be you have to be able to eat the right things and the recipes in the book give a good mix of all the different things that you might need to be the best you that you can be i'm guessing you're not a person who goes for the january detox you, you look after yourself 24 7. i can't you don't really get a detox I, i'm training through christmas i got christmas day boxing day and i got a bank holiday off this year which was nice um so uh I, other than that i'm training right through christmas and i'm not really allowed to overindulge too much at christmas so yeah. you know well up to the olympics i don't think you drank at all did you no two years before the olympics i gave up drink completely so it's yeah it's a, and once you do that you kind of lose the taste for a little bit and that's that's something that i touch on in the book as well is that you have to kind of really think about alcohol every glass of wine as a donut in calories yeah <laughs> unfortunately that's a, that's a great way of putting it i must go out for a donut with your mother soon <laughs> exactly yeah exactly yeah she's up for she she eats the whole pack as well when now, she eats it just a minute don't forget you're going to be in trouble here you and i have got ourselves in deep trouble debbie's I listening know. there's going to be debbie you're wonderful every square foot yes. of you now right <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll edit that out later. Don't worry about it. Okay, no, Tom, put it can, in. Can, can you stay with us for a moment? Yeah, of course. L lovely. Tom Daly on BBC Radio Devon, stretching the, the relationship with his mother to the absolute limit. BBC Radio Devon talking to Tom Daly. Tom's Daily Plan. Over 80 fuss-free recipes for a happier, healthier you. How are you at the moment, Tom? I mean, are you happy at the moment? Yeah, everything's going really well. I'm back at training, feeling good, and the year ahead is pretty busy with World Series, World Championships, and all that kind of stuff. But it's quite, it's quite nice to, you know, come down to Plymouth for a bit. Yeah, well, yeah, because you are going to be where? You're going to be at Waterstones. Yeah, Waterstones at 5.30pm for a book signing. So it's pretty, pretty exciting, actually, to go meet people that have uh, started to, to enjoy the book. Now, hang on. The, you mentioned the World Series there. Is that the one in, in Budapest? So the, the World Series goes from Beijing to Dubai, Russia and Canada. And then the World Championships are in Budapest in July. So that's the big one. Ah, right. OK, because I stood beside the pool a couple of months ago, I think I told you. And it's uh, the facilities over there look absolutely fantastic. But they're moving it, I think, over there. Yeah, it's a, it's a brand new pool. So the, it used to be a beautiful outdoor pool that we used to dive in. And now it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a new indoor pool. So I'm really intrigued to see what it's going to be like. At some point in all of this, you're going to try, <laughs> try and get married. Yes. 
Exactly. That, that's, the, that's the plan. It's just figuring out exactly when but with the in-between diving schedules and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to start planning it. And like, it's exciting to think about all these different things that we might be looking at. How's that going? Have you found a venue yet? Uh, it's going good. We're yet to find a venue, but kind of, you know, keeping it all under wraps for now because it'll be it'll be fun to be able to just have a, a nice wedding day and not think about anything and just be with friends and family. Yeah, that's the main thing. And 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 settling down and, and well, just enjoying life, because I tell you what, at times the media pressure on you has been intense. I've witnessed it. Yeah, I mean, it has been uh, in intense. I mean, it always has been. And it's something that that's kind of what you have to deal with as a sports person is the the pressure and the, the, you know, the ideal of you going into competition and just assuming that you're going to win it no matter what happens. And that's something that I've really had to focus on with the mindfulness things that I've been doing and being able to deal with stress, anxiety and going into competition or whether it's, you know, going into a work interview or whatever it may be, just being able to you know, deal with it and be as calm as possible. OK. Facing what you did at the Olympics, I mean, fantastic. Third in the synchro, but 18th. I mean, did the world turn against you? Did you find that an immense pressure? I know you took it personally that in your mind you hadn't done as well as others, but uh, the rest of the world just looked back. You, you were third in synchro, for heaven's sake. I know. I'm, I'm looking back on it now. Like I'm really happy with the bronze medal with Dan uh, at the Olympics. And an individual, I knew that I could have won the Olympic gold medal if I was in the final. But you know, you have to do it on the day. And the fact that in the prelim I won with an Olympic record, and it was all going so well, and it just shows what happens in sport. It's not like a sport where, for example, swimming or uh, sprinting, where you kind of know how fast you're going to run. Whereas in diving, you could be training the best you've ever dived and just the, you know, the blink of an eye, something can happen and it all goes wrong. I remember you celebrating, grabbing down, falling backwards. Yeah. I, I suddenly thought, does he know where the pool is? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> It was it was one of those it was one of those things that when you're stood on the end uh, edge of the pool looking at the scoreboard and you don't know whether you've come third or whether you've come fourth and it comes down to four years of hard work comes down yeah. to this one moment as soon as it comes up saying third like it, you just don't know what you're going to do it's kind of just like an explosion of emotion yeah and the, the the other thing that I should remember you for the Olympics is that the change in the pool color now I know oh, I suggested yeah. I suggested to you that's where they kept the samples but I mean, did yeah. you ever <laughs> <laughs> Do we ever find out why it changed colour? Well, basically, they handed over the management of the pool halfway through or something, and you either have a chlorine pool or a bromine pool, basically, and if you mix the two chemicals, they counteract each other, and that's what happened, so it was oh. untreated for a week. Yeah. Oh. oh. Uh, ooh. <laughs> so it was, like all sli it was like diving into slimy green custard. <laughs> It was it was an ideal. <laughs> Back to your mother's sausage casserole. Now, exactly. it's, <laughs> listen. Remind us where can we see you? Uh, so you can see me at five thirty uh, p.m. at Waterstones in Plymouth. So come down and say hello, and I'll be there signing some books. That's fantastic. And uh, catching up with people when you're back in Plymouth. Yeah, I'm going to try and see as many people as I can. That's the thing with coming back to Plymouth. So um, for such a short time, it's like coming down and like trying to do like a mass dinner to see everyone at the same time. Yeah, and and you, you like doing the the fan thing. I mean, you seem to get on with everybody. I've never seen I've never seen you throw any sort of Timmy tantrum. No, I mean everyone is always so nice whenever we see everyone, and it's it's nice to have people that are really supportive and you know want to enjoy the book and want are uh, supportive of my diving career and my life and everything. So it's really nice to be able to you know meet some of the people that support me. Okay, well, it is uh, Tom's Daily Plan, Waterstones. I believe it's a ticket event as well. You have to contact Waterstones to get a ticket for this. Yes, it is a ticketed event, and all the information is on my Facebook, so if people need to go and have a look, you can check it out on there. Fantastic. And uh, another banana cake might be nice. Okay, deal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tom, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Thank you.